how to generate high quality content consistently. Everybody knows that in 223, content is basically what sets you free, what sets your clients free, what basically both Tom and I's businesses are cornerstoned on. Uh, and today we're going to break down some of the tactics and tips and, and stuff that we're using daily to actually get big wins for our clients and, and deliver a really positive ROI. So Tom, how are you doing today? I'm good, brother. Another solid, beautiful day. Um, excited to share what uh, we got on this on this topic, really, you know? Yeah. All right. Uh, I think this one is extremely important because uh, basically any agency owner or small business that's you know, looking to generate new business and connect with customers. You know, both of us have drank the Kool-Aid years ago that basically it's video first, you know, if not video and it's like graphic design, it no matter what, it has to be scroll stopping. It has to be something that actually holds somebody attention and holds them there long enough to consume your message. Uh, and, and I know for myself, getting in front of the camera the first time to actually deliver that message was one of the the most difficult things in my life you know to actually get my my head around that to make sure that my studio was set up right to make sure that I was speaking on brand and on message and making sure that what I actually said had value to the people that are consuming it uh and and I would assume most new creators are kind of stuck in that same situation so kind of before we get into anything Tom I, I'd like to kind of break down like what it is that that you think is is really important about you know setting up the quality of your own recording like once you decide the video is the key what are the components that are required to actually be able to deliver at a at a high clip consistently yeah i mean i think so, there's a lot to unpack there right i think the very first thing is why video um and for you and your business because oftentimes uh people may think right some common objections are i'm in a business to where I don't want to show my face. I don't need to show my face. I don't need to be there. I'm in B2B versus B2C, right? All of these, I like to frame them as limiting beliefs, right? Are merely untrue. Cause in the end of the day, you're doing business with another person. Okay. And if you're going to show up, right. And your competition doesn't, this is another avenue for you to win. Right. But more than anything, I feel as though like with video and utilizing it, it's an asset class that is ultimate leverage. It's always working for you. So if you recognize that video could help give you an advantage, right? That's the first step, right? If you're then committed to trying to start using video, right? I don't know where you are. In the, I don't know where people are in the journey, but it could be anywhere from, I recognize I need video or I don't know if I do need video, right? That's the very first step, right? If you know, acknowledge that you do need video, then how do I get started? After getting started, how do I stay consistent? then how do I level up, right? In the end of the day, most importantly, think about it as a conversation you're having with someone else, right? If you're having a great conversation with someone and you're answering, getting to know them, right? You're building rapport, you're talking about your business, the types of people or customers or business that you help, right? And how you help them. What if you had that documented in a way, i.e. video, to where you could play that to people numerous times, right? To numerous people at once have it go out there and work on your behalf while you're literally ne networking with someone else face-to-face. -face. So it shouldn't basically replace or remove something that you're doing. It should only add more value to the things that you're already doing. And if you think about it in the context of this is the most efficient way for you to be able to clone yourself and your message and make sure that's dialed in, right? No one else is going to say it, deliver it, um, or perform it, if you will, better than you because no one else is going to care more about what you do than you do, quite frankly, right? Mm hmm like in respects to your own business absolutely mm -hmm. um okay so so definitely step one is deciding if you are in an industry that needs video you know i've i've definitely over the years had more than 100 clients the only one that convinced me that they didn't need video uh basically they made ultra high-tech cameras for nasa to put on space shuttles and the only people that were calling them were calling them you know, through like the student department of like universities that everybody's heard of, you know, like where it, it's just a thing. And it was basically always done by a Google search and it would only be technical terms. That's the only time anybody has ever convinced me that video doesn't actually matter past that. Anything that is like a, you know, basically a small business, a personal business, just actually 
you know, getting your face out there and telling people what you sell, I believe it's 100% correlated. You know, the amount of people that you ask to buy is correlated to the amount of people that buy off you on any single day. So let's just assume that we're talking to somebody and they have decided mm -hmm. that business is the key. They don't know where to start. You know, maybe they own a cell phone. They're thinking they're going to do a series of videos from their house. Um, how would you recommend that they that they get started with that? Some kind of key things to keep in mind, you know, make sure the house is quiet, make sure your pets aren't around, all, all of that kind of stuff. What do you think would be two or three pieces of advice somebody should really hold on to if they're setting up their own home studio? Yeah, I think the number one thing is being authentic. Be authentic with your message, right? We can work on everything else, right? Understand that. Imagine as if you're having a conversation with an ideal prospect on the other side of that lens, right? We can get, we can dial in all the specifics, but ultimately imagine as if you're having that conversation, you're already talking to somebody because ultimately that's how you want to come off, right? When we get into the nitty gritty of things, effectively, what do you need, right? You need a something to be able to, to capture video. Uh, the most important thing is your message. No matter what anyone says, right? Start where you are, right? And oftentimes when you think about what to say, the what part of what to say is typically going to start off with frequently asked questions, right? Mm -hmm. Typically in a conversation, when you have with someone there's rapport building first, then you more than likely get into frequently asked questions, right? You're either trying to diagnose someone's problem to see if you can solve it, or within that conversation, people are asking you questions that are frequently asked. So that would be a good series of things to kind of uh, start with in that sense. When it That's comes to the aesthetics of stuff, right? Make sure that you are in a place where your audio picks up first. Because no matter how good something looks, if people can't hear you, they're gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna pay attention, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's super actually effective. When I made my first series of videos, I just kind of picked random topics and then tried to kind of freestyle them, and did like thirty versions of each. I know they were trash, uh, but again, I looked at them as like just get them done so that that there's that content out there. Mm -hmm. But you're saying essentially start with the FAQs because that's what people are asking, right? They've already let to know your previous clients have already asked those questions. You know, somebody is saying that. Uh, and even more importantly, what I'm hearing is don't just be crazy. Kevin speaking to the phone, be Kevin yelling at my phone. That's actually speaking to a customer I can visualize. I'm not just saying it in my head. I know that I'm speaking to Phil and Phil has a certain set of desires and needs and just kind of envision it that way so that it comes off natural and authentic. Yes, absolutely. Hit record once, let it run, right? Because what ends up happening when you get into the thick of things, right, is there's going to be a point where you have to warm up just like anything else, right? Mm -hmm. If you are going to be on camera, there's a lot of things that you haven't done before or not done enough. Right. Oftentimes it may not be the actual script in itself, but it's just you practicing. You're not getting enough reps in. Right. So instead of you starting and stopping, you know, set your phone on a tripod or hold it in your hand, hit record and just look at the look at it and and talk and walk. Get comfortable with that process because there's a lot of things that you haven't done before to get comfortable with. Right. So if you think about it from that standpoint, right, what we want to do is just get comfortable with this new muscle that we're flexing, this new skill set that you're creating. And for the creators that have already been have already done this, um, cool. So if you've already done this, now how do you do it at scale or how do you dial in, say, that delivery better? Is it the delivery of what you're saying in terms of your messaging or is it, say, the equipment that you have that you need to level up? Because quite frankly, in the end of the day, my objective is to make sure that the people that bought into video get started. Because if you get started and do your first one, you got the activity knowledge down, right? You're you're, you're you're better off than what you were before sitting in the classroom thinking about it and never doing it. But for the people that have done 50 reps or 100 reps, right, it all starts with that first one. So for the, for, for the people that are at 20, rep 25 or rep 50, think about how you can level things up because ultimately in, in the end of the day, people have said, and I think I repeated myself, right, in that sense of that, or that statement, but um, you only have one chance to make a first impression, mm. right? So to your best ability with what you have and what you can afford right now in terms of time and investment in terms of the money, the, the money side, yeah, dial your stuff in so that you show up properly. Because if you do and you stand out, right, and you're standing out in a better way than, say, your competition, right, you make an impact. So quality mm. absolutely matters too, right? Is quality just related to the message, essentially? Like... Truthfully, if I'm looking for like the key that's going to set my business free and you, you know, just show up on my Twitter timeline, 
I don't really care if you're in flip flops at the beach or if you just got off your bike or if you're sitting in an office in a suit. Mm-hmm. The way like there's a little bit of personal branding that lets me know who you are as an individual. But ultimately, I'm there because you can solve my problem. And if you you actually show up with that right message at the right time, that's really going to go way farther than the rest of the setup. You know, basically anybody's yep. cell phone these days can get, you know, high quality video and sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. you can get 4K. Yeah. You have 4K in your pocket. Most of you have 4K in your pocket, so don't worry about that. But to your point, absolutely, right? So the nuance of what happened was, uh, if you think about it, when the world shut down and we could no longer go out, these one-on-one networking groups were forced onto Zoom or some type of a web communicating platform, a video communicating or video conferencing platform, right? So when that happened, how do you show up? How do you stand out from the competition? You're mm. in this little box, in this little frame. Right? Do you sound better? Do you show up better? Can you can you deliver better? Right? Those are the things that set you apart. But even more than that, the foundation of that is showing up with value at the right time. Right? So if you create your video series of your frequently asked questions and you're recording on your phone, even if it's outside and it's kind of and it's kind of whatever, not quote unquote perfect or like super high quality, the value of it is there. Because what ended up happening was because of this influx of people onto video platforms, there was a whole bunch of more people that became creators, even if they didn't realize that they were a creator or not, mm. right? But then ultimately, with all of this new, say, uh, video content being put into these uh, platforms, oftentimes, if something is overly high produced, people are going to sniff, the sniff test is, oh, you're trying to sell me something, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Are you delivering value? Or are you saying something? And do you look a certain way because you're trying to sell me something, right? So there's a balance there. I don't want anyone to overthink that, right? But understand the fact that if you have value to deliver and you are in video, hit record on your 4k smartphone, do your thing, right? Because you know that it's not the first one that's going to be the best one, right? We're aiming at 100 or 200 or 300 videos down the road, right? Like any job you've ever had, you know, like, when I was a waiter in university, the first table I showed up to was not the best table I ever did. But if I didn't take step number one, I never would have, you know, served table 10,000. Unfortunately, I did that way too long. The, The most important step on any journey is the first step. Yeah. So, okay, if we have it dialed in where essentially, you know, it's showing up and coming up with, with, you know, showing up with value, you know, for myself, I've had bad needs for a few years, and I'm always looking for new ways to do it. And recently, I'm, I'm on this kick where I think that the, the actual solution for my knee problem is fixing my hips, right? So I've been going on a bunch of like, basically voyages in in Twitter and Instagram, where essentially it starts with like the keyword of like hip tightness. And then I'm I'm going through 20, 30 videos. I'm following the channels that I believe are actually giving me good content that stands out from the other ones. And I'm 100% open to anything that they have to sell me as long as it solves my problem, right? So you know, I know I'm involved in some of these people's funnels already. Uh, and basically that funnel is based on value. So how do you actually deliver value in, in your scripts or when you're setting up with people, uh, with clients of yours, and if you're, you're making, say, a video sequence, if you're batching content with them, how is it that you actually decide what they're going to say and how do you help them frame it in a way that sounds kind of natural and authentic? Yeah, I think the very first thing is going back to just imagining having a conversation with someone face to face. Right. And if you think about it, if you are in front of someone and you're answering questions, oftentimes the speaker, right, right, that one that's proctoring the or the host of that show or that uh, of, or that panel, if you will, is going to ask you to repeat the question before you have the answer or before you say the answer. Right. So the very first thing is defining what topics you want to talk about. Right. What are the things you want to talk about that are frequent to you that you can offset or point to or have working for you while you're doing your thing? Right. Frequently asked questions, should ask questions, kick ass questions, industry specific things that only you would know because you're an industry professional. So within those three categories, you can go on a Google and find them if you don't already know them or if you need more. Right. Outside of that, once you have those questions, the very first and easiest thing to do is just look at that question. Right. Understand what, like, understand what your answer is going to be. So I, I know you've, worked with a bunch of mortgage brokers in the past Mm -hmm. um how is it that you would set them up in terms of like say the frequently asked questions uh answers you should know and kick ass questions how would you kind of break down that process yeah so the very first place i'd go is i'd ask them okay um what type of loan products do you offer 
mm-hmm. right? And what's what are you seeing now? Because typically there's only two types of people that they work with, right? In terms of the end user, it's either going to be um, someone that is getting a new loan or it's a refinance. There's nothing in between. Mm-hmm. But within there, there's subsets of products. So mm-hmm. then within those products, now we're identifying a specific product for a specific person. What questions do they have? Okay, so in any industry, do you think it would apply if you basically start with what is it that you sell? Absolutely. So as an end user, I'm saying, okay, what is it I'm act? What is the action I'm actually trying to get somebody to take? If I'm in the mortgage space, I'm trying to get them to basically say, I want a new mortgage or I want to refinance my existing mortgage. If I'm, you know, basically going B to C with a marketing company, generally the person is going to want either, you know, truthfully they're going to want more money through more customers. You now, if it's an e com. Essentially, I'm trying to get more people to the website to make more purchases, right? Okay, so once I've defined what it is we're selling, then I'm going to peel it back a little bit more and I'm going to look for like the motivation as to why people would want to buy that. Um, it could be motivation. Again, it goes back to what it is that you're, say, selling, right? If you are selling something that's signature to you, like say a restaurant or something, then mm-hmm. just double down on that, right? Like, what are the key features or benefits or the times of that, right? If you're talking about it, hey, this is what we have. We have 16 taps, right? Mm-hmm. We're open from this time to this time. We're here, customer service. The things that you're already saying and doing is just another, say, megaphone for you basically utilize for, right? In terms of utilizing four video topics for you to be able to um, talk about, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's essentially it's the benefits, your unique selling propositions. Those are the things that you want to keep front and center, as well as the questions that people who already know about you are asking you, like mm-hmm. your FAQs is kind of where to start. Uh, now, because we're talking about making quality content consistently, mm-hmm. uh, I know you always preach on actually batching mm-hmm. uh, your content together. So I I want to actually... One, ask you, what does batching content mean? And then number two, kind of think about like a way that I could set up the content ahead of time, because I don't just show up and make 10 videos. I have to show up knowing why I'm making 10 videos and what the point of those 10 videos are and where those 10 videos are are pushing somebody. Yeah, and that's a great point. So if you think about the process in itself, the process that you go through in creating your very first video that I'm encouraging everyone to do, right? that process, if you think about that right, as an assembly line or a checklist of things, how do you then batch that process so that at the very end, your output is more than one video, right? There's different schools of thought. Some people don't like doing that. Some people like doing that. I feel as though as a busy entrepreneur, right? It's a benefit for me to be able to batch that process together. So instead of just defining one video topic and then writing out the script and then hitting record and then editing and then publishing, right? How many can I take down that line and how f- efficient can I be so that at the very end, I have more than just one video? Mm-hmm. Okay. So if that if that's where we're starting, we've already established our list of our very initial topics. From there, what we're doing to get our first batch um, basically um, scripted, if you will, is we're basically just restating uh, the question and then answering it as if we were talking to someone, right? And then we're hitting record. Like that, that plays as your hook, essentially? No, see, we haven't even introduced her yet, right? This is just that first batch to get that done, right? So if if we're going to dial it in, getting your first round of videos together, you know already that you're not going to be the best. It's not going to be your A plus effort or game, right? So get them out the door. Just make sure that you're going through this process. Once you go through one, you then can go through, say, batching and then recording all of them uh, with that framework. No copywriting hooks have been integrated or even introduced to this person yet. Because oftentimes these people, our business owners that we're helping, they're not marketers. They might be super smart in what they do, like super talented, but they don't understand, right? One, that they've been like, you have to talk to people at, say, where they're at with just normal human vocabulary, ordinary vocabulary. So we haven't even introduced these things yet, right? Now, fast, fast forward in terms of batching, say, scroll stopping content that social media channels are wanting right now, vertical videos. What we've done is you think about it, you have to think about it from a copywriting perspective, right? What makes your a, a someone stop, like sc- uh, stop their scroll? So as you, as a consumer, if you're on any of these platforms and you're scrolling through these vertical videos, what are those things? One, it might be some type of action that you're doing, a prop or a tool. It might be the way in which you deliver 
um, uh, 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 the question, which is what effectively the first line of that video is typically what we like to call a hook, right? A hook. It's like a call out question that you're trying to get somebody to essentially, if I give you this two seconds where you hear me out, are you hooked? That, that's literally it. Are you going to stick around for the next 20 because you believe the payout is worth it? The hook is designed, right? In the sense of like you asking a question or making a statement in the first three seconds, right? That entices someone to stop scrolling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we've done, right? What I've done is in the, in working with my own video content and working with clients as well, it's been a challenge to be able to say, Hey, look, here's a list of hooks. Here's what you're saying. Now go ahead and combine that and write that script. They're not going to do it. So if we do it on their behalf, right, as the um, as the agency, the challenge then is, okay, I have a, a, a winning hook that I know is one of these scroll stopping hooks. I have the topic. Once I create a script out of that, oh, it isn't in the voice of my client, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have to go back and forth with that, right? So what we've been able to do to kind of um, not just bypass that, but then just to get over that hump is that process in itself, right, um, requires a little bit of back and forth. So once you get to the fact of, to where you have this um, script that you're reviewing as the person, as the actual talent that's recording the, the, the videos, what you want to do is be, basically read that script out loud. Mm -hmm. Read it out loud. The hooks in itself may be uncomfortable, but just know that they're weaved in there because it they work, right? But if there's words that you commonly don't use that you're getting hung up on, you're tripping up over it, but it just, or it doesn't feel right, change it into your own words. So you know that the framework is solid because it's proven, right? It's a copywriting formula, whether it's hook, problem, solution, hook, problem, agitate, solution, whatever you're doing, right? Um, the framework there works is worked throughout time, right? So we know that that's not the issue. The issue might be the performance of it to say, ah, oh, that necessarily, I wouldn't say it that way. Awesome. So once you- In, in essence too, like any business owner that's been up and running for a while, when you talk about- um, you know, if you give them a jump off on one of their FAQs, they can speak about that passionately. And, and you know, the, the problem is not, can I speak about this for a minute? It's like, can I speak about this for less than a minute? Yes. Because any industry you're in, it's like, hey, can you, like, why would I want to refinance my house? Right. Somebody would go off on it. They could give you half an hour on that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because that's all they do every single day. And the point is, like once you hit that flow state, that's when the videos actually work. When you forget that you're speaking to a camera and you're just literally answering the question in the way that you would naturally, that's when these videos are are really working for people. I've seen it time and time again. And every script that I've ever made, you know, in general, like when they're reading it, it doesn't work. It works as a jump off. This is what we're trying to say in this segment. The hook is going to actually call them out. Yeah, and if you think about it too, like a 30 second or a 60, 60 second video isn't going to give you entire answer with all the details. What, it want, what you want to do is peak interest to start a conversation. The objective of that video for you is to peak interest, right? Cool. Stop the scroll, peak interest, start a conversation with the person that's on the other side of that video. So it's not even solving the problem. It's just saying this is how we could solve the problem. You know, essentially identifying that you have the answer to this problem if they want to talk more. Mm -hmm. Or there's just more, right? If this is the starting point of that conversation, I do have that problem. That might be one symptom of that problem. I don't know how to solve that because there's no way you're going to be able to solve that in 60 seconds or 30 seconds at best, right? Then it's like, what's that next thing? Hey, a business, a business has complex problems, right? Like truthfully, right. if they could solve it in one second scrolling on TikTok, well, they would have done that shit already. Absolutely. Absolutely. And what it does too is it shows that you're, you're top of mind, right? What you want to do is be able to provide value. So how much value can you provide in 30 seconds? That's the key. Or in 60 seconds, that's the key, right? If you have this problem, here might be some answers to it. Or here's some answers if you have these few problems, right? And the view time is actually going to really matter for you. The reason that you have to keep it hot is because essentially that's going to tell the algorithm that for people like this person, this content is, is valuable. So you hit yeah. them with the book. So that essentially they're going to be there for three, four, five seconds right off the bat, call them out in that, in that way, and then just 
try to stack as much value as you can in there to keep them on for the 30 seconds or 45 seconds that you want. Absolutely. So the rest, like, you know, the ingredients to this recipe are going to be subject matter expert or business owner that has something to sell or some type of service to provide. Either way, you're selling something, right? A physical product or a service. That, and then you have these proven messaging temp, like, you know, frameworks, which is the copywriting and descripting, right? And then you have these social media platforms that want vertical video. So if you think about these ingredients, how do you now then map this business owner to then play nicely with the social media platforms to where it's benefiting their business? So with all of those ingredients put in mind, you know, and with the advancements of AI, I've been able to put a few of those things together to make it a heck of a lot easier for that business owner to the point of where now it's like, once we've identified and gone through, say, onboarding, what type of business do you own? What do you sell? Who do you sell it to? And we define all these topics, right? I've created an automation to be able to pull that information that we've extracted from that business owner, right? Um, map that with uh, a series of proven hooks and then be able to create scripts that are a 30 second version and a 60 second version. So then now we have an initial run of an output for these scripts. Let's say there's 30 of these scripts. Within these 30 scripts now that we have, right? How much has the business owner had to do? We've had maybe a 45 minute to an hour call to understand more. So I can understand more about their voice, right? In terms of who they are, how they show up, their personality, but then also uh, the topics that we kind of need to uh, basically start generating ideas around. Now that business owner, after that say 45 minute to a, a one hour call, right? Is going to then get presented with these 30 scripts, right? The next exercise for us now, right? Is condense so many time frames right? To be able to get to where we are now, right? Now the business owner can review the scripts, say them out loud, adjust them. So then basically they're wordsmith them so that they sound more authentic, if you will. And then we're getting to the point of just hitting record. So you think about all of those different stages, right? That you'd have to go through to create 30 videos uniquely one by one, or we can do it in one fell swoop now to where now they're showing up, reviewing the script on the day that we hit record on the day that we shoot, we hit record, they perform their scripts, their job's done, and then it gets handed off to the editing team, right? So you have an automation that essentially does all of the prompts and all of the scripts a business owner would use as long as they're in specific industries. Essentially, these are the, the start-off points that give people the information that they need so that they can batch the content effectively. 